Here are the wings. Inside, we have Ingles and Gobert. And it's Conley in at the one. And for the Pacers, Ogden and Oladipo, the backcourt duo. Sabonis and Turner up front. And it's Warren in at the three spot. Well, the defense so concerned about the dribble drive ability of Donovan Mitchell, but boy, you better contest as well. Conley against Brogdon. Outside Warren. And Oladipo has it in the corner. Shot clock at five. Drills the three-pointer. Well, Victor Oladipo wants a three-point answer, and he delivers it. Nicely done. Here's Mitchell. 11 points for him in that last game against Oklahoma City. And not just the scoring. It was also how fierce he was on defense, grabbing three steals on the night as well. Here's Bogdanovich, and he converts the layup. Well, you have to like the balance of Boyan Bogdanovich keeping it through the contact. That is nicely done. And here are the Pacers now. Brockton outside. And there's the pass to Oladipo. Lock at six. Pass to Sabonis. Over Mitchell. And too long on the shot. Well, certainly not the best defensive effort, but this guy can't make them pay for their laziness. Ingles finds Conley. Bogdanovich against Warren. Back to Bogdanovich. Stolen by Warren. Here's Oladipo. And that one's on target from the wing. Oladipo's got five. Well, this is one aspect you'd like to see more of from T.J. Warren. We know he's a great scorer. Pretty dime there. Back to Bogdanovich. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. T.J. Warren picks one up. And the signing of Bojan Bogdanovich, a great move for the Jazz. With his shooting, more spacing for Gobert and Mitchell to operate. He's capable of creating shots on his own as well. And in a league obsessed with shooting, easy to see why Boyan Bogdanovich has solidified himself as a key player. I mean, over 40% from long range in recent years, competes defensively. He's a player. He hits both from the strike. And truly some significant roster changes for the Pacers this past summer. Jeremy Lamb, Malcolm Brogdon, T.J. Warren. They've gotten younger and gotten better as well, if you ask me. Excellent work by the Pacers front office. Here's Warren. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. You talk about the quiet producers in the league. T.J. Warren is one of the first names that come to mind. The last few seasons, Warren has come close to chipping in 20 points a game. Doesn't do anything flashy, but he just hits his shots and piles up the points on a nightly basis. That free throw good from Warren. Well, you think back to T.J. Warren and how good he has been for the last few years. And yet last season, he took a huge step forward by adding the three-pointer to his arsenal. And he makes both free throws. And the way Warren improved his three-point shooting last year, Doris, was incredible. No doubt, Kevin. This is a guy who went from below 25% the year before from distance to making over 40% of his range shots. He did all this while coming close to tripling his three-point attempts. What an improvement. Well, you might think at six foot three in shoes, Donovan Mitchell is undersized for the shooting guard position. But his combination of strength and length along with the athleticism help him to hold his own. Listen. 
and the first one drops. Greg, nowadays teams looking for plus six players. That's a player whose arm span exceeds their height by at least six inches. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell, how about a plus nine? <laughs> I mean, a little over 6'1 in socks with a 6'10 wingspan. Those long arms, the reason for the spider nickname. And so he hits both. Well, this guy has multiple ways to get to the free throw line. And boy, has his stroke been on the money. The Pacers have gone 2 or 3 here to start out the game. Rodgen the pass to Turner. Bogdanovich against Warren. Back to Turner. Outside Warren. Outside Lamb. Four on the shot clock. They get the rebound. That's not his spot, but given the lack of defense, you'd like to see him knock that one down. Here's Mitchell. Rebounded by Lamb. Last outing for Utah, it was a loss to the Thunder in Oklahoma City. Here's Turner, and Turner throws it down. How about that? He's seven feet tall. And Miles Turner, because of that ability to move in any direction at any moment, is a big-time problem inside. Now here's Conley. He's coming off a 13-point game against the Thunder in Oklahoma City. And let's not forget about the assist. This guy, as a playmaker, was a driving force for that offense. What a terrific pass. Work the ball inside and create a good look for your teammate. Lamb against Mitchell. Brogdon outside. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Michael Conley picks one up. The guy is Brogdon, not a player that turns heads, but man, is he an efficient threat on the floor. And he's been a great three-point shooter really since his rookie year. His field goal percentage continues to climb and has evolved into one of the best free-throw shooters in the game. That free throw good from Brockton. And this is what we've been waiting for all summer long, all off season long after many months, Doris. Basketball is finally back. And what's incredible, Kevin, is the NBA's popularity just continues to grow. There's worldwide enthusiasm. The NBA players represent the league so well. And my goodness gracious, can they play some basketball? Interesting how now the league, Doris, is commanding the calendar uh, all year round. It used to be such a seasonal game. Now it's, it's, it's 365 days a year. So many storylines throughout the course of the summer. Who's playing where and with whom? Now, here's Mitchell. He's got five. No good. That's miss number two. He's one for three. Mitchell against Lamb. Pass to Brogdon. And there's the foul. It'll go on Joe Ingles. That's his first foul. And the next one puts him in the bonus. Lamb. Boy, the lateral quickness of Donovan Mitchell. What a solid defender. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Lamb. The Jazz have gone three of five, shooting the ball so far. Conley against Brogdon. Gobert down low. Mitchell outside. Let's it go with a three. And Utah, another three. Boy, Donovan Mitchell as a jump shooter, so pure. Now here's Lamb. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. The shot by Brogdon wide open. And once again off the mark by Indiana. Jazz leading by three. Conley feeling it out. And they call an illegal screen here. This is the list of last season's top shooters from the charity strike. These guys were practically automatic. Malcolm Brogdon, number one. And no doubt he finished the season right where he should have on that list. He was far and away the best free throw shooter in the league. Down low, Warren. Sweet little floater. 
off the delicate floater on display from T.J. Warren. Jazz have gotten four of six field goal attempts to drop in the first quarter. Lamb against Mitchell. Pass to come. Six on the shot clock. Offline with his three. And it's Warren with the ball for Indiana. They trail by one. Here's Brogdon and foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. Michael Conley picks one up. And a player who flew under the radar last year, Malcolm Brogdon. Pacers wanted to add him over the summer. Got a hefty deal from Indiana to leave the Bucks. Exactly the kind of player that the Pacers need. Ties it up, and this next one could give them the lead. A different look for Utah. George Niang comes in for Joe Ingles, and it's Clarkson in for Mike Conley. And that one falls, and that puts him up by one point. And the playmaking of Joe Ingles, such a valuable asset for the Jazz. Well, Greg, they've needed more shot creation. And his growth in that regard, especially operating in the pick and roll, such a big lift to their offense. Shots good by Clarkson. Well, the one thing about Clarkson, a little bit inconsistent from deep. So that's a welcome sight for his team. And Lamb kicks to Turner. Brockton outside. Back to Turner. Brockton against Mitchell. Brockton the pass to Lamb. This one for three. Gobert pulls it in. Utah has gone three of four on three pointers in the first quarter, doing well from long range. Stolen by Brockton. Four on three break. Stolen by Mitchell. And he finishes nicely on the layup. Mitchell's got 10. Wow, unconscious has he been this quarter. They're riding that hot hand. Brogdon kicks to Turner. Outside Warren. The pass to Lamb. It's deflected. Jazz leading by four. Clarkson looking for an opening. Here's Niang. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. Five on the clock. Gobert. No luck. They battled on the glass but couldn't knock it down. Indiana's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Lamb, good. Listen, this guy is not the most dangerous threat from there, but you have got to honor the shooting a little bit. Now, here's Mitchell. Ten points for him. There's the foul. It's on Jeremy Lamb. That's his first foul. McDermott's checked in for the Pacers. Then for the Jazz. Royce O'Neal's checked in for Bogdanovich. And it's Moutier in for Mitchell. On defense, the Pacers. They trail by one. Back to go bear. Six to shoot. Clarkson with the ball. He's picked up by Lamb. And that one good from Clarkson. Well, pick your poison. Jordan Clarkson is proficient in the pick and roll game. And he's basically saying, what do you want to give me? I'm going to take advantage. Passes to Brogdon. Turner trying to free himself up. That's good from Brogdon. On the assist from Lamb. Lamb's got his third assist on the night. Pass to O'Neal. Back to Clarkson. Fires the three. Unable to get that one. And it's the Pacers taking it the other way. And they have a narrow edge here in rebounding early on. And you want 
wonder what kind of a role that's going to play moving forward. And, and his presence as a scorer, it, it just has a calming effect for the rest of the team. He's a fallback option whenever they need one. And you feel like Jeremy Lamb has been in the league forever, mostly known for being a piece in the Harden trade when he left OKC, but Lamb has come into his own the last few years. Looking at who's out there now for the Pacers. Justin Holliday comes in for one. And it's T.J. McConnell in for Malcolm Brogdon. And Jeremy Lamb, you feel like, Greg, he could be kind of a, a late bloomer. The improvement he's shown the last few seasons has been huge. Much more comfortable as a scorer, and the defense has picked up for him as well. Because of Rudy Gobert's thin frame, people were trying to take advantage of him early physically in his career. For the Jazz, they wanted him to get stronger, get in the weight room, and become more of a problem. The Jazz shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. Yeah, last year, collectively, only 74% from the line. A free throw drops for Gobert. And for seven-footers like Gobert. It seems, Doris, there's more risk of injury. Well, everything the Jazz organization has done with Rudy has focused from the core down. They want to make sure their big man has functional strength that eases pressure on the knees and ankles. Both of those areas have been so problematic for guys his size. And Gobert drops them both. With the Indiana Pacers, you know you're a small market team, and it's led to a little bit of a shuffle personnel-wise. What's incredible, they continue to put a competitive product on the floor year in and year out. Jazz have gone 7 of 13, just over 50% from the floor. Some good looks. Pass to Moody. Back to Clarkson. Gobert and it's sent back by Turner. How about Turner's ability to anticipate when the shooter's going to release? Couldn't be better at timing his rejections. Pulls up. Utah with the rebound. Doris, you're right. The Pacers have made the playoffs eight of the last nine seasons. Remarkable consistency. I don't think there's any doubt about that, Kev. It starts at the top and sort of trickles down from ownership to the front office down to the head coach. This is a solid operation through and through. And here are the Pacers now after the basket by Utah. Holiday looking over the floor. From the arc. A shot by McConnell. No good. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. And out of bounds as the Pacers gain possession. And so Holiday will bring it up for Indiana, trailing by two. And here's McConnell. No points in the game yet for him. Holiday dishes to McDermott, and the shot is good. McDermott's got it all tied up now for the Pacers. Well, McDermott is working on that interior game because he has size and touch. Clarkson passes to Moody. Back to Clarkson. There's the three. The basket good off the assist from Moody. Clarkson's got eight points. And he likes to get in a rhythm early. Nice triple. Now the pass to McDermott. With some art, Gobert with the block. Let's remember that the seven-foot frame includes a seven-foot-nine wingspan. Rudy Gobert, the stifled tower, doing work. You will have to finish harder than that if you want to convert in traffic. Passes it to Holiday. Now Holiday. Pass to McDermott. Back to Holiday. A shot missing. Gobert with the defensive effort. 
Moutier looking around over McConnell. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. Donovan Mitchell. on all cylinders for Utah. He got into double digits for the quarter with 10 points total. We'll return shortly. It wasn't an immediate star turn for Mike Conley. And the ups and downs of injuries and... Greg, work ethic is the key. Conley stayed at it. And a player that's known for keeping his composure, that, that helps also. He weathered those early challenges and just stayed positive. And close game underway so far. We'll see if either of these teams can jump out in the second quarter. And from what we've seen from the Jazz so far, what's your take? Just stretching out the floor in that first, uh, they had the defense scrambling. And that was obviously the plan coming in. Now the big question, can they maintain that efficiency from range as the game goes along? In a moment now to reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up for the second quarter of basketball. And so in the game for the Pacers. We've got Miles Turner. Victor Oladipo is out there with McDermott. And it's Holiday in a small forward. Moutier kicks to O'Neal. Gobert against Turner. And Justin Holiday picks up the foul. That's his first foul. And the Jazz with some changes. Joe Ingles, he's checked in for George Nian. And it's Conley in for Jordan Clarkson. And we played through the first uh, minute here in the second. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. And although the team didn't have much success last year, Emmanuel Moutier certainly got his career back, I thought, Doris, in the right direction. Well, I think for Emmanuel, he had an opportunity for minutes. And he played as he needed to in order to show that he is a capable player going forward. The tools, I think, have always been there for the former number seven pick. It's about starting to put it together consistently. And he makes the first. No doubt uh, passing is a premium for this team game of the NBA. We love the individual star power, but it is a team game. Are there any playmakers out there that don't get Doris, you think, enough credit for all that they do for their team? Well, the first guy that comes to mind is a man that Steve Kerr described as probably the smartest single basketball player he has ever been around, and that's Andre Iguodala. The numbers mm. in terms of his scoring, obviously not eye-popping, but his incredible defense and then his elite passing skills have been so critical to so many championship teams. There's a bonus. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got nine rebounds now tonight. Uh, more good work on the glass there. When it's all said and done, I think rebounding might tell the story in this game. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Well, Kevin, coming into the 2017 draft, Donovan Mitchell wasn't sure he was ready for the NBA. Mitchell said, I worked out in the summer with Paul George and Chris Paul. They were the ones who convinced me to keep my name in the draft. They said, look, you're good enough. Just go out there and show it. Kevin, through a couple of seasons in Utah, that's exactly what Mitchell has done. He has made an instant impact on the NBA and the Jazz. DA, thank you. Moutier with the ball. And it's Aaron Holiday with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Donovan Mitchell's checked in for Emmanuel Moutier. Here's Gobert. Ingles passes to O'Neal. The Jazz working the ball around now. And it's Aaron Holiday with the foul. That's foul number two for him. And still early in the period, and they're only one foul away from being over the limit. Here's Mitchell. Good D by Holiday. Indiana trailing here. McDermott kicks to Holiday. 
There's a bonus. Goes back up. And it's good on the way in. Sabonis has got four points now in the quarter. Well, DeMontis Sabonis has a nose for the basketball. He understands if he keeps moving, he's going to get to the offensive glass. Holiday against Conley. That shot off. Excellent D there from Holiday. Now about three minutes gone in the second quarter of basketball. Now here's McDermott. He has five. Pass to Sabonis. He kicks it to Holiday. Down to five on the shot clock. I'm deep. But they'll get another chance. Here's Sabonis. And that's going to be too many steps. Gets the whistle on the travel. And now a look at the upcoming schedule for the Utah Jazz. On Friday, they'll be facing Drew Holiday and the New Orleans Pelicans. Then on Saturday, They'll be taking on Jonas Valanciunas and the Memphis Grizzlies. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. No one covering. Conley's got a couple of three-pointers in the second for the Jams. It's Conley's ability to hit the long ball that makes him such an asset. Stretches the floor and creates space. Holiday finds Holiday. Releases. Gets that one to fall after missing his first two. One for three from the field. Oh, my. I didn't know he had the crossover in his bag of tricks. Now, I've seen it all. The pass to come. Over Holiday and Utah again with the bucket. Well, you like that he shakes off that rocky first period and knocks down a shot. Nice. So the wing on the left. Indiana needs to get a shot off. From deep three-point range, the shot by Holiday, no good. And when you are as good a shooter as he is, you have the confidence. You have to have the confidence to take that shot. Might not always fall. And for most guys, I think you only want to take that shot if you've hit a few in a row. That is absolutely a heat check. The feed to McDermott. Shot's good by Turner. Turner's got the game tied up here for the Pacers. But Kevin, Miles Turner has great versatility, so he can score from anywhere, but right there is his bread and butter. Here's Mitchell. Ten points for him. Over Holiday. Excellent D there from Holiday. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will take it. Guys, when you think about the Jazz, you are talking about an elite defensive unit. Rudy Gobert in the middle, the defensive player of the year, and the guys around him are committed to the scheme and outstanding individual defenders. Looking at who's out there now for the Pacers. T.J. Warren, he's checked in for Miles Turner. Lamb comes in for McDermott, and Brogdon subbed in for Aaron Holiday. Now here's Gobert following the miss by Donovan Mitchell. It's stolen by Lamb. <laughs> to the middle. Here's Warren, and it's Warren with the jam. Well, T.J. Warren finishes with authority. I'll give you a salute, sir. And it's Mitchell with the ball for the Utah Jams. Trailing by two. And the Jazz very disciplined at the defensive end. Now, Kevin, you have a veteran squad with the anchor Rudy Gobert, one of the elite shot blockers in the entire league. And this is a group that's so important here. They defend without fouling. Really, uh, the right play defensively, if you can't block, force him to the line. On the night, he's gone two for two at the strike. And converted more than four out of every five free throw attempts last year. So just solid at the line. And the Utah Jazz, not exactly a magnet for big-name free agents, Greg, but for their young star, Donovan Mitchell, it has been a perfect fit. You know, they needed a score. He's played big minutes from day one and really thrived in that role. Second free throw, no good. 
And something that's troubled Indiana the last three years, rebounding. I think, Greg, it's probably manifested at both ends of the floor, right? Some of it's about roster construction. Some of it's about style of play. Some of it's about philosophy. But their inability to control the glass has at times had an impact on them. T.J. McConnell, he's checked in for Justin Holliday. On defense, Utah. They get a hand on it. Stolen by Conley. Kicks to Mitchell. Back to Conley. Three-pointer. Good on the triple. Conley's got 11. I'll tell you, the team is simply riding the hot hand. This guy has been lights out. McConnell passes to Warren. Back to McConnell. And oh, what a play. He just palms the block. And it's Mitchell with the jam. Boy, how about the blinding speed in transition? Donovan Mitchell, ferocious attacking in the open floor. Passes it to Sabonis. Warren against Ingles. Back to Sabonis. Dishes it to Warren. Shot clock at six. For three. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got rebound number 12 here already in the game. Pass to Conley. Stolen by Brogdon. And he dunks it down. That's a stomach punch, guys. Mm. Turn it over and give him a free run to the bucket. Oh, you're so right. No question who has the momentum now. It's still close, though. These teams have been neck and neck. Let's see the response here. Here's Gobert following the score by Indiana. Six to shoot. Good day, good day. The Jazz need to get off a shot here. A nice shot by Bogdanovich. Well, Boyan Bogdanovich, a very confident basketball player. He knows very well he has the green light to take these shots. Now, here's McConnell. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. To a certain extent, you like the aggressiveness, but that's two fouls already. Take a step back. And Indiana making a change here. Oladipo's checked in. Utah also making some changes. George Niang comes in for Rudy Gobert, and it's Clarkson in for Mike Conley. There's a bonus. He's coming off a 28-point game against Boston. And, guys, remember, remarkable passing the ball as well. He racked up a number of good assists. Puts up a three. Here's Warren. Rebounded by the Jazz. Last time they met was in Utah. And the last time these two met, they were able to get a big win because of that bench production. Second unit might be a factor in this one as well. Certainly something to keep an eye on. We'll see how the rotations go this time out. Every night it seems to be different. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Lamb, good. Utah leading by three. And here is Mitchell. He's got 13. Top of the key, Clarkson. Pass to Niang. It's rebounded by Indiana. Sabonis has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. On its way from Oladipo for two. And it's off the back rim. No good. And it's Mitchell with the ball for Utah. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Pacers will take it. Let's take a quick look now at some stats for Lamb. Good season for him last year. Put up about 15 points per. Five rebounds and two assists. He's been nothing short of fantastic during that stretch. Offense coming very easily for him. And so much of it to me is his ability to read the floor, make the right decision, and then go right after the action he wants. Now here's Lamb. Victor Oladipo unable to get his last shot to go. Well, it looks like he has put that rough first quarter in the rear view. He's starting to cook here in the second. Oladipo against Mitchell. And it's Mitchell with the jam. 
This is Mitchell at his absolute best. Driving, attacking, putting all the pressure on the defense. Lamb against Bogdanovich. Lamb passes to Sabonis. And the call will be against George Meehan. That is his first foul of the game. The Jazz making a switch here. Boudier is checked in. Oladipo outside. Just five on the clock. The pass to Sabonis. Shots over Clarkson. And there's Sabonis. That's good on the assist by Oladipo. Six points for Sabonis. This is a real strength of DeMontis Sabonis' game. He has such nice, soft touch. And back in his day, as coach of the Blazers, players called Nate McMillan Sarge for his style. Very tough and demanding. The beauty, though, Greg, to me is Nate McMillan has adapted. He has given more leeway for his players and his assistant coaches. He's willing to take players aside and bring a more personal approach. And I think in today's NBA, that's critical. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. And starting to send guys to the line way more than they need to. Let's get some good position defense going here. That should be the emphasis and get away from the sloppy fouls. Now, here's McConnell. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Passes it to Oladipo. To the paint. There's a bonus. Good. And it's Oladipo picking up the assist. Oladipo's got four assists in the game. For Utah, they've gone 8 of 15 since we began the second quarter. Excellent shooting. Here's Niang, defended by Sabonis. Pass to Clarkson. I'm deep. Pacers with the rebound. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Pass to Oladipo. A three. Offensive rebound. Warren, good. Warren's got four points this quarter. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Now, Moutier. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. Sabonis with the steal. And some good action through the first two quarters as we reach halftime. Indiana out in front, leading by just one. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. Here with Coach Gwen Snyder. Gwen, what concerns you most about the first half? Well, I think the tempo is in their favor right now. They're, uh, they're fast, and they're getting up and down the floor. So they're running out in transition. Got to beat them to the punch. Thanks very much, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, David. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Ernie Johnson here with Shaq. For the Pacers, the first quarter was pretty even. They kept at it on both ends of the floor. And that'll do it. And we're halfway through this one. Plenty of basketball left in a game that's been fairly even so far. It's been one outstanding game from Donovan Mitchell. He had a fast pass to the lane that first half. Got inside on demand. Now this guy is such a good finisher on the move. And so far the defense has not been able to counter it. And after a fairly even first couple of quarters, the second half could turn out to be a great one as both teams try to gain an edge. And so in the game for the Jazz. At the forward slots, it's Bogdanovich and Ingles. Conley and Mitchell, the talented backcourt pair. And it's Gobert in at the five spot. Well, you think back to Victor Oladipo and his college basketball being played at Indiana University. So when he gets traded to the Pacers, many thought it was viewed as a homecoming.
No good on that one. And exceeding expectations in Indiana. Victor Oladipo Doris remade himself as an all-star. Well, he credits the year he spent playing alongside Russell Westbrook. That relentless attack, that commitment to get better, that commitment to be a threat no matter where you are on the floor. This young man has set the tone between the lines and outside the lines. If you were coaching Doris and you could run your offense through any center in the game, and let's take guys that are playing right now because you can go back in history and the names are endless, but who would you run your offense through at that position? Probably a guy that the casual NBA fan is not as knowledgeable about as they should be, Kevin, and that's Nikola Jokic. And mm. this is a young, early 20-year-old who may be the best passer out of the post position that we've seen in a generation. Jokic is a guy who can handle the ball from three-point territory. He can take it off the window and initiate your offense. They run him like a point center and it's appropriate because he's unselfish and gifted as a passer. Gifted. Great word to use. You're right. Conley and already over a decade in the league for Mike Conley. He never got past the numbers game to make the all-star team in the crowded Western Conference but make no mistake about it. Conley is star caliber. Falls for Conley. Still a solid point guard in this league. When Conley is healthy, he makes a considerable impact on both ends. And so Mike Conley nails both of them. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Indiana leading. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Michael Conley. That's his third foul of the game. And for those of you turning in, we're about a minute into the second half. Sabonis, the pass to Turner. Oladipo with the ball. Now defended by Mitchell. Conley against Warren. Five to shoot. And there's the call on Rudy Gobert. That's his first foul. On defense, Utah. Sabonis kicks to Warren. Lock at six. Launches a three. Utah with the rebound. Gobert's got rebound number 13 for him here tonight. Bogdanovich passes to Ingles. A floater, and he lays it up and in. Ingles has got it all tied up now for Utah. Well, how about the court awareness from Bogdanovich showing off his ability to find the open man, Kev? Bounce pass from Brogdon. Here's Oladipo. Reverses. And that's two points on the layup. Oladipo's got eight points. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. And so it's Conley bringing up the ball for Utah. Following this one, they get to host the Pelicans. And that's the first game in a string of three straight at home. Back to Mitchell. And the pass to Conley for the lead. For the bucket. He's made five so far, shooting a very clean five of seven. And so many teams now look to establish the perimeter to set up everything else. No doubt it's a growing trend, Greg, and he is highly accurate tonight. Now, here's Sabonis. Ten points for him. Shots good by Turner. Well, 6'11", 255 pounds. Miles Turner using that size to his advantage. Conley against Brogdon. Conley left side. Oladipo with the block. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will retain possession. Doug McDermott, he's checked in for Indiana. 
And Utah also making a switch. O'Neill's checked in. Third quarter here, and three minutes have come off the clock. And that one, good. Well, this guy flat out carrying the load for them offensively. He is taking and making good shots. What a terrific job. Conley against Brogdon. Passes to Warren. Over O'Neal. And there are the Pacers with another bucket. Don't you get the sense that T.J. Warren enjoys the challenge of a defender in his grill? Conley against Brogdon. At the elbow, it's Gobert. Mitchell right side. Brogdon against Conley. Has to Gobert. And it's sent back by Turner. And it's Brogdon off the drive. Stolen by Mitchell. to Conley. Oh, that's blocked. Boy, T.J. Warren showing some activity on the defensive end. Great timing on that block. Ball's knocked loose. Stolen by Mitchell. O'Neal with it. He kicks it to Mitchell. There's the pass to Gobert. Mitchell against Oladipo. Clock at four. Pass to Gobert. And it's good. The time running down on the shot clock. Gobert's got his second bucket tonight. Well, how about that beautiful touch from the inside? Rudy Gobert feeling like he can shoot over anyone. Pass to Oladipo. The three. No good on the shot. So Utah will take it the other way. And with the summer's acquisition of Mike Conley, Greg, the Utah Jazz hoping to make a step in the West. And really, Mike Conley, their best point guard since they traded away Darren Williams back in 2011. Alongside Bogdanovich, a big upgrade offensively, and he can hold his own on the defensive side as well. Well, he hasn't proven to be much of a floor spacer for them. He had the 1-3, but that was back in the first half. Warren against O'Neal. Has to go bare. Fades. No good. Well, it hasn't been the most efficient game for this guy, but their team is fortunate to still be out in front. Tipped away. Oladipo outside. Fires it up. And he overshot that one, missing. Boy, a tough go for him in this quarter. You can see how desperately he wants to get things started. He just can't make a shot. Mitchell kicks to Conley. Utah gets it back. Pacers have gone 4-9 of nine from the floor so far in the third. Warren, the pass to Brogdon. The pass to Oladipo. Over O'Neal. Oladipo, good. Oladipo's got five points now in the quarter. Oladipo is a star, and he powers through the contact to convert. Timeout is called first of the game for the Jams. It was such an honor to be on this with you, and you were the first female to become a full-time NBA analyst, uh, breaking new ground. You've accomplished so much in your life, personally, professionally. What would you tell young women who are graduating college, looking to get ahead in their career in what you've chosen? Well, first and foremost, I've been very lucky, Kevin. The game of basketball has been a part of my life since I was seven. It's been a driving.
in force. I love it. I would just tell young women, times are changing. Um, dream big. There's nothing that's impossible. And I'm so thankful to the NBA players and coaches who have just wrapped their arms around me from the time I entered uh, this business. So kudos to those players who are part of the change, no question. And hard work. I have seen you work. I have seen you prepare. No one prepares more. No one works harder than you. Thanks, Kev. Here's Brogdon after the made shot from Victor Oladipo. Holiday with the three. Rebound collected by Clarkson. There's some defense for you. For someone who's as good at shooting the three ball as he is, you, you need a defender who's equally good at guarding against him. Now, here's Brogdon. Eight points for him. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And you look at the 2000. All-Star season for Oladipo Doris. What was the development in his game that you saw that took him to the next level? I think probably the, the part that made him almost unguardable is his willingness to shoot threes off the dribble. That deep threat, that willingness to space the floor and use the dribble drive to enhance that is probably what put him over the edge. The Pacers making a change here. Holiday's checked in. That misses, so he splits the free throws. I think most people consider Salt Lake City not a big free agent destination. So the Jazz are what they call a pipeline team. And what does that mean? It means they have to draft and develop their talent internally. Now here's Gobert. He's got six. A shot by Clarkson. No good. And the rebound battle split evenly thus far. It's Turner high post. Stolen by Clarkson the finish rips down the breakaway slam well how about the steal off great anticipation by Clarkson then the kick ahead perfectly done and the Jazz say they need a fundamentally sound process to building their roster Doris no shortcuts well there's no question about that Kevin this is a group that has to be value spaced with their free agent acquisitions in a small market the draft picks have got to be smart they're teaching and cultivating of that talent and development is absolutely critical and that one is good you can see the improving court awareness of Emmanuel Moutier having an understanding for when to find his guys passes it to Brogdon misses off the left iron and that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. And boy, to have someone back there who can erase your mistakes. What a big time asset defensively. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from the paint. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. Occupying that instant offense role, Doris, Jordan Clarkson able to get his shot anytime. No doubt, Kevin. Uh, he's a little bit of a streaky scorer. The challenge is on the defensive end. That's where he has to really improve if he's going to stay on the floor and impact winning. Some changes for Indiana. Zabonis comes in for Doug McDermott. And it's T.J. McConnell in for Brogdon. For Indiana, they've gone at a pretty good shooting pace. They're 6-13 from the field here in the third. Now, here's McConnell. 
He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. With the putback, Gobert pulls it in. The Jazz have gone 7 for 16 in the second half from the field, shooting a bit under 50%. Clarkson passes to Niang. Here's Gobert, and the call on the shot that sends him to the line. It's going to go on Sabonis. The gigantic frame of Rudy Gobert is a problem for the defense. Very hard to contest this guy without fouling. Interesting story about Rudy Gobert. He was an excellent student in high school, but he was getting into physical fights. So what does his mom do? Play sports, my son. Track and field, martial arts, even ping pong. What I love, though, is he has not lost that tough disposition. First free throw is good. And doors, especially at that center position. You know, GMs like a player with a fighting spirit. Rudy Gobert plays with a chip on his shoulder and a competitive spirit. A lot of seven-footers can play the game simply because of their size. Rudy Gobert wants to be great. The Jazz making a switch here. I've got to just check in. He doesn't get the second one. Well, at seven foot one, Rudy Gobert has become known as the stifle tower. And this guy's starting to excel and get a big role on the offensive end. They didn't have much of a problem getting the ball into the post that time. Rudy a kick to the end. Clarkson's got the game tied up here for the Jazz. And so it's McConnell with it. They'll bring it up for Indiana. After this one, they're off to Philadelphia to take on the 76ers. That will be a getaway game for them, a one-game road trip. Now, here's Sabonis. A tight defense on him. But they no around him. They get it in. Consistently able to shoot the basketball. He forces the defense to make an aggressive play. This is his first trip to the line tonight. And in the past for last season, he was a 74% shooter at the line. And very much a modern offensive game for Miles Turner. Doris, not a post-up guy, but he's No, he can shoot the face-up jump shot. He's exceptional at rim running. And think about his running form. This is a young man that tried to fine-tune his stride. He has become a factor now, Kev, going end-to-end. No good on the second, so he has one for two. And historically, you almost never saw a great shot blocker who could also knock down triples. to Bogdanovich. He dishes it to Clarkson. Six on the shot clock. Over Sabonis. Another miss by Utah. In the end, 11 by three. Two seconds separate the shot clock on game. Right side Turner. Holiday with a pass to McConnell. Pass to Sabonis. Good. And McConnell gets the assist. Sabonis has got the lead up to five now for Indiana. Well, what you love is Sabonis has both the athleticism and the strength to play through contact. Nice. Here's Bogdanovich. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall.
And we've watched three so far in this one. Pacers lead by five. It's the NBA on 2K Sports from Indianapolis. Three tenths quarters behind us, and more to go. Thanks for being with us as we begin the fourth. McConnell and Lamb in the back. So bonus and Turner up front, and it's Holiday in at the three, the small four. So that's the group out there for Indiana. And two shots coming up at the line as he gets fouled on the shot. And there's a call. It's on Indiana with a foul. Justin Holland. Two minutes gone here in the fourth. Stolen by Conley. You love that defensive effort right there, showing up. Over Lamb. Conley's shot is off. I don't know if he's tired or what, but he is definitely holding back a little bit, and he has to step his game up right now. And it's still a rare sight to see me down now, like the one he's had tonight. His production has been unbelievable. A testament to how much he cares about his craft. One easy look. Don't allow the defense to set up. What a beautiful fast break opportunity. And he can finish pretty good. Now, oh, here's the bonus. Warren on the wing. And once again, off the mark by Indiana. Jazz trailed by three. 
They double team Conley, passes it to Indy. And there's a nice one-handed slam. And they have gotten themselves back into this game just in the nick of time. If that one had to come any later, it would have been Petey Bartadol. <laughs> Showing so much passion and determination here at the end. They're close to the lead, but still have plenty of work left to do. And the Pacers call time here. Well, Doris, you look at Joe Ingles, and he's quietly become one of the better small forwards in the NBA. And he is the prototypical don't judge a book by its cover because they call him slow mo Joe or average Joe. But dig a little bit deeper. This guy is a quality playmaker and a knockdown shooter. Check in for Indiana. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Oldman. Hey guys, well, Nate McMillan had some advice for the team during their last break. His concern was both their inconsistency and their amount of three point shots. He said, let's move the ball for good shots. If you have an open three, take it. Otherwise, let's attack the brand new. Put some pressure on these guys. Thank you, David. to go bear and the foul on Miles Turner. That's his third foul on the game. O'Neill is in for the Jackets. Go bear the pass to O'Neill. And a foul call on T.J. Wall. That's foul number two for him. Mitchell again. Go deep. Mitchell kicks the timely. Just five to shoot. Shoots over Turner. And he will step on in, sinking right through up the back guy. Man, have they been effective at getting the ball inside. Rockton finds Turner. O'Neal against Warren. Pass to Oladipo. There's a bonus. Out to Turner. And a wide open shot from Warren. And in the end, another three. Warren, O'Neal with the 
Jones at the rep. Chance trailed by seven. They've been looking at a six offensively. Yeah, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Stand by Warren. Now the base is moving it again. It's a stop. And it's Warren with the kick. Everything's looking at the easy ones. It's a stop. It's a stop. Now, here's Warren. Oladipo outside. Pass to Brogdon. The kick out to Warren. Over O'Neal. He clangs that one off the back iron, and down it falls. Warren's got the lead up to nine now for Indiana. Utah calls timeout. Well, the Jazz's Quinn Schneider has become one of the most respected head coaches in the league. And think, guys, a player poll even had him ranked seventh among coaches they'd like to play for. And consider he's in Utah. That is not exactly a free agent destination. Chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, T.J. Warren. And the decision-making tonight has just been outstanding. If the shot hasn't been there for him, he's just kept the ball moving. And that patience is how he's got his field goal percentage to almost 60 here tonight. He doesn't take over games like this very much, but it's always possible. And when he does here at home, these fans love it. the inbound pass and it's Mitchell missing and Doris what is it do you think about Quinn Snyder that gives rise to that respect well you think about it he played the game at a high level of course collegiately at Duke he has paid his dues as a coach he's got tremendous intellect for the game and there's this growth mindset with him he's always looking at himself how can I get better do you have high hopes for the new draft lottery system uh, to, to keep every team competitive to the very end of the season? Well, one of the keys in implementing this new draft lottery system was to make sure that the bottom three teams were given equal opportunity to get that top draft choice. I think you did see it have some effect on uh, play and teams trying to be competitive while understanding they're still going to have an opportunity to build their team through the draft. But here's the reality. The NBA has got to be under review constantly. There's a process in play. It's one of the most proactive leagues in the country in terms of always looking for little things to make sure their game is the best it can be. Attention to detail. Well said. All three throws good from Turner. Well, to me, this franchise has got to be thrilled and excited about the upside Miles Turner has. He's a hard-nosed player who wants to be great, Kevin. Now, here's Mitchell. Pass to Conley. Takes a three, and he's good on the three ball. Conley's got five points in the quarter. Boy, picking up where he left off. His second from distance is half five overall. And there's the pass to Oladipo. Six to shoot. That's tipped, and that's out of bounds. Indiana will retain possession. Just three to shoot from deep three-point range. And the shot by Warren, no good. And so Gobert will bring it up for Utah. Passes to come. 
Good work there as it goes. And you can see what the emphasis was at halftime. Here in the second, a lot more effort to get the ball inside, and it's starting to pay dividends. And over the course of his career, Mike Conley taking on more and more of the leadership man. He's embraced it, Kevin. And he said letting his hair down was a way of letting go and just being confident in himself. Pacers leading by five. Pass to Turner. Oladipo against Mitchell. To the paint, here's Horan. O'Neal with the defensive effort. Never easy to stop this guy at the rim, but that is a beautiful contest right there. And it's Mitchell missing. And the activity he shows around the rim it is why he is such a respected defender. And what you love about his work defensively, the ability to challenge and change shots without fouling. And the foul called on Donovan Mitchell. That's his third foul of the game. It's Brogdon on the wing. Ingles covering. Brogdon the pass to Sabonis. Five to shoot. Eyes a three. Well, there is the defensive anchor of this team, Rudy Gobert, wreaking havoc on the defensive end. Baseline jumper. Count it, and the Pacer lead has been cut to just three points on the basket from O'Neal. The Pacers have gone 7 to 16 from the field here in the fourth. That's about 43%. Oladipo outside. Pass to Sabonis. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. It's going to be on Donovan Mitchell. Well, to me, the size of Sabonis creates problems for the defense. You cannot be careless in how you guard this guy. And he's good on the second. You know, they would have liked to have gotten the ball, but he did make it a two-possession game. And the Jazz call time here. We've seen T.J. Warren really having a great game. And he is absolutely dialed in from outside. They need to close out on him much quicker when he's lining up those threes. Jazz working the ball around now. Conley kicks to Mitchell. Over Warren. Mitchell finds Gobert. And slam dunk by Gobert. Gives him a double-double in this one. 11 points and 24 rebounds. Ogden against Conley. On the pass to Warren. Back
back to Brogdon. Six on the shot clock. From deep. Rebounded by Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Pass to O'Neal. Back to Mitchell. Here's Ingles. That misses. Had a chance to tie it there. Indiana's gone 4-7 with the long ball here in the fourth quarter. Oladipo uses the glass to finish the way. And the Pacers lead by four. Oladipo growing into that clutch player. Everyone believed he could be. What great boys down the stretch. Now, here's Mitchell in the corner. O'Neal with it. And Utah, another three. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up. Got to fight over it as a defender. And, Greg, you know exactly what that takes. It takes energy. It takes activity. It takes intensity. Leases one from three. Ola Depot. Big time moment. That's my moment. 56 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Depot against Mitchell. And he overdid it there. Too much force it looked like on the foul, and he's called for the flagrant. And, Kevin, that's a pretty dangerous play right there. I mean, I don't like to see a player put an opponent in harm's way. As much as you just saw him do there, glad they pinned a, a flagrant on him. Yeah, you're right, Greg. The officials were all over it. They weren't going to let him off the hook that time. Boy, you have to admire Donovan Mitchell. This guy is capable of playing either guard position, and he plays with so much passion and energy, guys. It's infectious. You must embrace the pressure and knock down critical free throws. Nicely done. Bogdanovich, he's checked in for O'Neal. Mitchell dishes to Gobert. 35 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Mitchell passes to Ingles. Right between the eyes! So much riding on that shot. What a bucket. I'll tell you, that changes things, doesn't it? Good job, young fella. What a game. Timeout called the Pacers. They trail by one. 27 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Oladipo. Six seconds left to play in the final quarter. Money! And they do have a foul to get. Utah calls timeout. They're trailing by one. 17 seconds left to play here in the fourth. What do you think, guys? This is where great coaching can pay dividends. Well, this is a chance to take the lead. So you've got to draw up a play to make it happen. Here's Mitchell. For the win. Oh, that shot had a chance, but no good. So a close game sees Indiana take this one. That was a fun night of basketball and fabulous finish as they continued to wait out until the very last moment to seal. And there are so many times when you see these tight games won at home, that advantage of having that crowd behind you oftentimes is the ultimate X factor. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thank you. Victor, what does tonight's performance say about the confidence of this team? Uh, just we're pretty good. We play great together. You know, um, and we play well together as a team. So when we do that, it's easier for us to be teams. Victor, one to Matha. Thank you, my man. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching.
See you next time.